people think I'm a scanner expert, these OBD2 scanners, um, just for the record, I'm totally not an expert at this. But companies keep sending them to me and asking me to review them. And so I say yes, because for, so it's a way to, to you know, investigate different options and see what works best for me. And maybe give you guys a little bit of help figuring out what might be best for you. Uh, I'm not a big expensive scanner guy. Like I just think like I get the there's some value in those if you're a if you're a you know uh, a professional mechanic or um, you do a lot of real high end kind of kind of work. Uh, there's the, the value in that for you. That's not what I do, so it doesn't it doesn't really fit for me, and it probably doesn't fit for you. If you're watching this video, you're watching my channel. You're probably, you know, uh, similar to me in that you're a backyard mechanic and you're trying to figure out how to do stuff at home. And so you need to keep things on a budget. So when I look at scanners, especially these fancier bi-directional scanners, uh, well, it's true even for the other ones too, but they're already in the budget world. You know, that's sub $100. Um, for, the, for those bi-directional scanners, I'm sort of a sub $500 guy. That's kind of my cap. Anything that's going to be in that seven, eight hundred dollar range or higher, I'm out. Like I don't care. It doesn't. There's nothing it's going to offer me that I'm going to want to take advantage of. So this company, King Bullen, sent me their version. I, I did a video a while back on the X Tool D7 that I have. I've had it for a couple of years now, and it's a nice scanner. It's worked really well for me. It's relatively inexpensive. It's in that like high three hundred dollar range, just under four hundred bucks. It's been super, super valuable for me. And so I did a video on that, kind of kind of talked about how this work, why a bi-directional scanner is valuable, what you might want to do with it. You can check that, I'll link it up here, you can check that out. They saw that video, they asked me what my, for some feedback, what I thought about that particular scanner and what I'd be willing to try theirs and compare them. So I said, sure. So this is a King Bolin, I believe this is a K7. It's pretty nice. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'm gonna bring it over to you and we'll get a closer look. Let's uh, unpack here in our fancy, shiny workspace, otherwise known as my scratched up truck hood. First thing I guess I'll say about this is that I like is the case. Um, let me grab the x tool one, kind of do a comparison, show you what I mean, why I like this case better. So the, the x tool case, this is kind of a mess, sorry, is a nice case, I like, you know, it's hard, it's uh, protective. You can just toss it in the back of the truck. My complaint with it, this goes up in here and locks in, locks in. I'll show you that what I mean. Put that over to cover the face. When you close the lid, the tool comes out every time. Now, yeah, I know I slammed that kind of hard. So, okay, let's close it nice and soft. <laughs> every time. It doesn't matter if I, you know, like, yep, I can close it this way instead, so it doesn't fall out, but the cord sits and rolls up sort of into this hole. It also doesn't fit very good. It sticks way up. So when you close it this way, the cord starts to unravel and it just gets to be an unruly mess. So the stuff doesn't stay in its particular pocket very well, and that's kind of annoying. Most of the time, as a result, I just keep it out like this. And this just sits in a toolbox. This goes into a bag when I want to go somewhere and I just keep it all in one piece, toss it in a bag, take it with me if I want to go look at a car or diagnose a friend's car or whatever. This soft-sided case, first of all, it's much smaller and that's nice. I like the soft-sided case. I like the fact that it's just the open top, not the clamshell style. And everything sits down the bottom. So it's all, as long as you have it right side up, Everything sits down in here. There was some manuals in here, uh, and documentation for registration and all that. And that's not in here because, you know, who reads a manual? Let's talk about the hardware a little bit. It's a wireless one, which another complaint I had about this one was the cord was kind of a pain in the butt. It's not near long enough. It's uh, kind of clunky to fold up and put in the case. Now, I've, the reason I bought that one, Xtool also has a wireless one. And I bought the corded one on purpose. 
So I just wish I could come up with a better cord system. Like, can't we just use a long USB cable? Why has it got to be an old, you know, half inch thick serial cable? There was a lot of debate about the wireless ones, that the wireless ones were not as good. They lost communication, they were really slow, uh, that that wireless Bluetooth communication just wasn't fast enough and wasn't stable enough, and the corded one was just constant. It always works. And that's true, that's still true. The corded one will always work. But Bluetooth has gotten a lot better. I actually don't know if this is Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but it has gotten, the technology has improved dramatically. It's much lower power, it's much faster speed, it's much longer range, and so I thought I'd, that would be nice to give this wireless one a try. Certainly a lot more convenient. Style-wise, it's pretty nice. It's kind of a cool looking tablet. It's got this, I'm a lefty, so this is nice too because the, the kind of a grip is on the left side. And I could hit with the right hand, but I can hold it with my left. It's got this like kind of grippy, look a tire tread looking stuff on it. It looks cool. It gives a little bit of grip like with my dry hands, but I bet if my hands were sweaty because it's kind of plasticky. It is a little flexible, but it's awfully slick. I'll bet if my hands are greasy, it would be a little slippery. Power button up here on the top. USB, you know, connection on the bottom. This is not a waterproof connection. This is more of like a dust cover. I wouldn't tr like say this is waterproof by any means. Maybe not even barely water resistant. You got two plugs on the bottom, a type C for charging. They give you a cord and a, and a block for that. And then a type A connection for connection to uh, a computer to download data. Um, and they do have some external devices you can connect as well. Different modules like TPMS, battery, uh, testers, things like that, that can route to this. It's got a camera in the back. I think I read it was a 13 megapixel camera, which is kind of nice. I don't actually, it's kind of a cool idea. I don't know why more people, more companies don't do that. Maybe they do. Maybe again, this X tool one is kind of old. Uh, cameras are cheap these days, so not hard to put one in. And that's pretty handy. You don't have to get your phone out, you know, take a picture of something while you're, while you're working on it, when you got this already in your hand. This is the wireless dongle. It just plugs in your OBD2 sensor, just like any other one does. It just works uniquely with this particular device. Comes with, like I said, it comes with a charging cord and a brick and it comes with a bunch of international style plugs. I think it's an Android 10 device. It's definitely faster than the X tool. Again, it isn't fair to make an absolute apples to apples comparison, like a one to one. This is brand new, newer tech, newer hardware, newer operating system. That's, you know, two years old. Well, actually it's probably more than two years old. It was, I've had it for two years. And it was the previous model, like they already had the D8 when that, that when I bought it. So that was, it's been out for a few years. I don't know, it's probably three or four years old maybe in its tech. So that's not exactly fair. Price point wise, they're pretty close. I should talk about that real quick here. This one is, I think if I looked on, by the way, they did send this to me for free. So I didn't pay for this. I did pay for that one out of my own pocket. This one, it was, uh, I think it's 470, 480 on Amazon. When I looked this morning, this is uh, late September, it was a $110 coupon and get it for under 400 bucks. At under 400 bucks, that's pretty awesome. That's that now closer to where I spent on that. And I got, I got Prime Days coming up, the October Prime, uh, you know, Prime member special, like I think it's the 8th and 9th of October. And there may even be a better coupon coming up. So let's talk about some of the features here. First of all, this is a uh, subscription-based model. Uh, people kind of freak out about that. They all are. All of these bi-directional scanners, good luck finding one that's not a subscription model. Even Snap-ons is a su subscription model. This comes with free three-year subscription. The X-Tool came with two, but then they gave me a third year. So it, I ended up getting a three-year subscription, but it was initially only two. I had the option when I bought it of a, of a free gift another um, wireless dongle that worked with you know your phone uh, the cable that connects to the FCA the Chrysler adapter for Chrysler cars a couple other things I don't remember what they were and one of them was an extra year uh, and they, they, they value that extra year at a hundred bucks ninety nine dollars so that's what they say their subscription is ninety nine dollars a year not a terrible amount of money but it is you know it's not zero so this is three year uh, what's true about both of these things as well is once that subscription expires, it'll continue to work where it is. So you're just sort of stuck with whatever snapshot in time you are at that point in time. You just won't get any new updates. One of the things I noticed about this when I was playing around with it, kind of learning how it works, to, to, you know, leading up to this video, it comes with a free trial. And the free trial gives you 10 connections, 10 scans. Uh, and so, you know, you can you basically use it 10 times. 
it um, and it works and it works fine. I noticed it was rather slow, and when I when I finished out this whole subscription model and set up for an, set up an account, it seemed to be faster. The other one is it won't save anything, any reports. Um, it's it's just to play around with it, kind of kind of free trial. So once I set up the account, it did work a lot better, which makes me wonder if once that account expires, once my updates expire, will it revert back to that style or will it continue to work the way it works today? I don't know. We'll have to find out in three years, I guess. If you know, if one of you guys have had this, although I don't think this is three years old, but just think about scanners in the past. If you've reached the end of your subscription model, What's the functionality look like? Because I don't actually know. Some of the stuff we'll do here just because it's easier to do outside the car and you can see it better. We'll start with settings. There's a bunch of settings you can put in here. Uh, you can customize. You can customize your browser. It does have, it's a full Android operating system. So it has Chrome, it has email. Um, it's like a little tiny Android tablet, which is pretty nice. One of the things that's super cool is you can set up a screen recorder and I'm going to do that so we can make it a little easier to watch what's happening on the screen once we get it inside the truck here. You can set up your Wi-Fi, you can set up region, time zone. So this is all just the basic configuration and um, it does have, like I said, it does have Wi-Fi so you can talk to the internet, you can do some research on it, you can look up codes if you have to, it'll do it for you sometimes. And uh, this is also where you get your updates. Should be up to date. Oh, there's a bunch of updates already. I just updated this the other day. So see, they do have a bunch of updates. Uh, they're regularly maintaining this. So that's, uh, you know, I did an update two days ago and there's uh, 90 new updates. So it is, you know, it's kind of nice. They are actually working on it. Oh, the other thing that's nice about this interface versus the older, I think it's just because it's a newer version of Android. Uh, this can swipe and that one you have to hit buttons to go back um, and it, it still works but it's just this is kind of I don't know it's just kind of smooth uh, files file storage module you can hook up other modules like I said there's there's the battery there's a TPMS you can hook up a scope oscilloscope and a printer if you want to print stuff out uh, updates the app updates repair info so this gives you a bunch of like how-to type stuff. It's like if you want to do a repair, it's kind of the way they're they're wording this. Here's the tools by which you could do the repair. So you can browse with Chrome, go look something up on on Google or YouTube or whatever. Mail, check your mail. There's a calculator. Um, if you were a professional and you were charging people for this, you can set up a point of sale uh, and you know swipe you know use one of those square devices and swipe a credit card. There's some tutorial videos, and then an electronic manual. That's another manual we can ignore. Uh, reset function. So this is resetting a bunch of the like codes or warning um, modules in your vehicle. So like your oil pressure, not your oil pressure, your oil change notification. Uh, you reset your tire pressure, reset your, you know, all those different sort of periodic codes that come up. You can reset them back to to zero or reset them back to a factory default. So like, let's look at brake. Well, I don't have, I don't have the device hooked up, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna show me anything right now. We'll, we'll get inside and, and uh, play around with some of these. Oh, the stop start, I'd be, boy, I, this, obviously this old truck doesn't have it, but if that's something you can turn off with using this, this tool, uh, I'd be a big fan. I hate the auto stop start. Uh, we actually don't own a vehicle that has it anymore. So, um, be one of these days I'll try that out. But anyway, this is where you can reset a bunch of stuff. Do your TPMS reset, um, relearning. And then uh, the big ones here are the uh, the OBD and the scan. Well, actually really just the scan. That's what most people are gonna use. It is a really nice interface. It's actually relatively quick. The other thing I do love about this, and again, I wanna be fair, like I'm probably gonna say this a bunch of times in this video and you may get sick of it. Uh, it's not totally fair to compare this to the X tool, but in comparison, one of the things about this one so far, I'm at 71% battery and I haven't plugged this thing in in two days. And that one wouldn't make it an entire day without needing to plug back in again. I'm like, I'm regularly grabbing that scanner to go use it and then reminded that I didn't have it plugged in and the battery's dead. It happens almost every time and it's kind of annoying. I tend to have to turn it all the way off and turn it and then turn it all the way back on. That saves the battery on it if I want to use it later. And it takes a while to boot up because it is a little bit slower and a little bit older version of Android. So really nice battery life so far um, on, on this one. You know, it looks pretty 
And the interface looks nice, but what do we really care about? How well does it work? So let's go see how it works. Plug this in to the OBD2 port. There we go. Get a little beep and the light shows it's on. It does stay powered on all the time. So something to keep in mind. Uh, I actually, the first time I was messing around with this, just was, I left it plugged in for a while, was playing around with a tool. It ran the battery dead. Now, uh, I'm not sure that's like that maybe a battery problem too, but just something to keep in mind. Like, I don't know if I, this is one of those that I would just leave plugged in all the time. Like I've said that about some of those other smaller dongles. You could just plug it in and leave it plugged in. Just connect your phone to it when you want to. This one, I wouldn't do that. You probably won't anyway, because it's tied to this. And so you're going to want to keep them together, but just something to keep in mind. All right. I'm going to fire up the screen recording option. So you guys can watch me work through this here. Screen floating window. There we go. Okay. All right. So like with any other scanner, you got to turn the key on. So we'll hit scan. When you hit scan, it comes up with a uh, bunch of options here. You can do a demo. If you just want to see how it works, it'll give you some demo uh, vehicles some pretend vehicles you can play with. You can get a history. You can do, um, you know, a bunch of different uh, options on here. You can handpick a vehicle. If some of that, sometimes, especially, it seems like on some of the older vehicles, uh, like that fiber that I had was like that, where it was kind of a hybrid OBD1, OBD2. The search function didn't find it right. I actually found it as a V6 car. So I had to manually enter everything in and then save it in that Xtool scanner. So if, if your auto search doesn't work, you can pick the vehicle you want to use. But this one works, so we'll just do auto search. And it goes through this kind of cutesy VIN scan, kind of like it's launching, they're like trying to hack missile codes. Joshua, what are you doing? It's kind of cool looking. Um, it's, uh, it takes a few seconds. And then go through, this doesn't, you know, again, it's an older truck, so it doesn't find everything. So I got to pick that it's an automatic, pick that it's equal or over 8,600 gross vehicle weight. Uh, it doesn't matter radio I pick because it has an aftermarket radio. So I'll just say up level radio, um, a dual climate. I don't know what the PHT is. Do you guys know what that is? So I'm just going to pick the regular CJ2. These can be a little slow. So when you think about, is this a, is like my, you know, I mentioned before, like one of the complaints about wireless versions of these is the speed. Um, the computers in the cars are really slow guys. So they're not like, you know, there's a lot of it's a hurry up and wait because of the car, not because of the tablet. Um, so don't get too winged out about the speed here. Rear drum or disc, really drums. So now we're kind of at our main scan screen. So you have four options here. You've got, you can run a health report, which is does a full scan gives you kind of a report basically like it says on on how healthy everything is system scan kind of does the same thing uh system selection is you can hand pick which ones you want to scan you just like i want to just want to do hvac or just want to do the uh, pcm and then common functions is things like resetting your oil light and kind of giving you things that are typical common functions for this vehicle um and there's a bunch of stuff uh Tire type reset, which I believe would be, yeah, tire size calibration. So there was an app I did a video on, I'll also link that one for the Jeep, where you can change the diameter of the tire in the computer so it resets or basically recalibrates the speedometer. The same, this gives you that same function. That's really nice. Um, kind of, a, it really is a nice one stop shop. Okay, so. Most important part here is we're just gonna do a health report. Now, this can take a while. We're at 4%, 7%, so it jumps kind of quick at first, but I remember when I did this before, it takes about two and a half, three minutes. So I'll, I won't make you sit through watching this whole thing come up, and uh, we'll we'll pause you here, and we'll come back here in a few minutes when it's done. Yeah, it took about, it took about three minutes or so. Not too bad. So it'll give you this health report. 
So like things where it has a green checkbox, that means everything checks out. Uh, some of these things, no, it's not so much in here, but some of them will be a little gray box, which means it couldn't find it, couldn't talk to it. That can mean an error, or it could just mean you don't have it, like the radio. It has a bunch of other ones that have uh, error codes. So if it's red, it means it's got an error code of some sort. The number is the number of codes it has. So we'll look at the powertrain code here. Knock sensor, something I knew was true. One of these days, I've got to do that. Uh, well, the knock sensor is a pain in the butt. It's down in the valley of the engine and I'm not looking forward to that job. Let's look at heating air conditioning. So passenger compartment sensor, temperature sensor one, circuit range performance and recirculation position feedback circuit range. So there is some weird stuff with the AC um, maybe related to this. I'm not sure. I haven't really done any troubleshooting on it other than I noticed I first got the truck, AC worked fine. The next day after I bought the truck, the AC stopped working and or at least wasn't working on the driver's side. It was blowing hot air on the driver's side, cold air on the passenger side, which was weird. Uh, and then I turned the temperature up from like low, I think it was a set of 60 or whatever, turned up to 65 and then I got cold air. So something weird about that in that, in that module. I don't know if that's a problem with the module itself. I don't know if it's related to these codes, but there are codes here. One of these days we should probably take a peek. So you can go through, there's a bunch of them. There's rear seat audio, data link malfunction. Um, I have the headliner out and the interior disconnected the seats are out for, to do the headliner. So a lot of this stuff has been disconnected and that's why it's throwing a lot of codes. So passenger presence system. Yeah. There's no passenger seat. <laughs> so it's not working. Uh, so anyway, you can see all your code, just like any other scanner, you can see a lot of codes, but it is a kind of a nice quick interface. Now that you can do with it, if you want to, you can click on this little question mark. It'll pull up a browser Googling that code for you. And you can just like you do on your computer and you can go through and troubleshoot. I wonder if just for the heck of it, will, will it play a YouTube video just for fun? Oops. Dot com slash at rhinos. Let's pull up our own channel here and see if it'll load. I don't know if there's any volume or speakers on this. There you go. It does work. So you can even YouTube something on here. Uh, it has Bluetooth. You might be able to hook up headphones. Uh, I'm not sure. Not getting into all the technical specs of the Android tablet itself. But um, again, you can swipe back and get back to where you want to be. Um, let's just look at a system scan. So the system scan does pretty much the same thing. When you get out of it, it does get that, like you hear that beep, they just give you a warning to make sure you pull that dongle out, don't leave it in there. Like one of the big advantages of bi-directional scanners is that you can actually, you know, do stuff. Let's do, let's go back and do another auto search here. Um, you can do live data, so you can actually extract data out if you want to use it for troubleshooting all various parts of engine performance, uh, transmission performance, uh, your exhaust, um, all kinds of stuff. And then you can also, um, you can also activate different modules, different sensors or different things within your car. So that's the, you know, for me, the big advantage of the bi-directional scanner is you can troubleshoot different functions uh, without having to take everything apart. So for instance, I think the example I used the last time was, was the uh, windows. Uh, earlier, I actually did a video where I was messing with the lock here and I couldn't get the lock to work. And at one time, now in that particular case, I knew pretty quickly that it was just something gummed up in the lock mechanism. But, you know, let's say hypothetically, it wasn't. It was, it was just non-functional. So was it the button that didn't work or is it the solenoid for the lock that doesn't work? And so you can go in here and you can say, hit the, door, hit the driver's door lock. And if it locks, then it's the button, right? Uh, the solenoid is locking and unlocking. The mechanism is working. Just the switch to make it work is non-functional and vice versa. Tell this to do it and it doesn't work. You want to make the window go down. Is the switch bad? No, the window doesn't go down. Even when the computer, when the scanner tells it to go down, then the problem is actually the window motor. And so you can narrow down a lot of your troubleshooting before you start spending money and taking stuff all apart. And that's super handy. Um, one of the things I wish was true about these, it's not true about this one. 
it isn't true about the other one either, is the having to reset all of these settings every single time. I don't know if I'm not figuring something out, how to store this vehicle so I don't have to keep uh, resetting all of its individual uh, options, like weight and does it have disc brakes or drum brakes? And does it have a manual or an automatic? Like, why doesn't it remember that? You guys that, you know, you King Bolin or x -Tool, either one, if you guys are watching this by any chance and you want to tell me how to do that, I'd appreciate it because your manual doesn't tell me and it doesn't seem to work. Um, not unique to this one. This has been true of every one of these scanners I've ever used. And it's super annoying. Somebody, some computer engineer, fix this, please. Okay, let's go to system selection. Let's go to body control module. And let's do an actuation test just for funsies. Output control. Uh, we don't have any lights. Let's turn on. Let's try the horn. Let's get you out of the way. That works. And the other thing obviously you can do with any of these scanners, you can clear the fault codes. I'm not going to do that because I actually want to keep the code. But um, you can you can do all kinds of that read data stream. That's what I was looking for. Uh, my exhaust fan isn't working in here. Well, we can run it for a few minutes. I'll just, I'll just open the window. It's going to get kind of hot in here, but let's go to powertrain. And you can do a read data stream, do engine data, and you can pick what type of engine data you want to record. So for instance, we could do, I don't know what's engine data one give us, gives us fuel, AC crank. Well, that's all, that's everything. What does data two give us? Oh, fan control. Four wheel drive, AC, camshaft position sensor. So you can uncheck and uncheck certain things and it'll record it live. And then you can output it to via USB to your computer. And then you can do all kinds of stuff. You can give that to an engine technician. You can give it to a tuner. You can use it yourself and do some custom tuning. What else does I have in here? A lot of, I mean, basically every, every electronically controlled, which these days is pretty much everything module you can interact with. So, that's how the Skinner works. Uh, it's pretty nice. Here's my, here's my take on it. Pros and cons. Start with the cons. Um, Cause honestly, I really do like this scanner and there's fewer cons than pros. Uh, first one, like I said at the beginning, as far as form factor, I'm not sure that that isn't gonna be super slippery. And um, especially if you get summer heat, your hands get sweaty. Uh, I wonder if that'll be kind of a, a little more difficult than the, than, than the other one. You know, I haven't done any sort of drop test on it, so I don't know how, how sturdy it is. The other one did, uh, the extra one does have those sort of ruggedized reinforced corners. The corner of these things, if you drop one, that's typically where you're going to damage. It's going to land on a corner. That's where it gets the most force with the least amount of support. And so it's good that they reinforce those corners. Um, and uh, obviously you have cracked screen issues as well, but typically the screens are recessed a little bit. It has to fall on something on the screen. If it just lands face down, the perimeter, the frame of it keeps the screen off the ground and usually doesn't break the screen. I, I expect that's true here. I just wonder if that material is going to be a little slippery. Uh, the second critique is, again, I, I don't know if that's unique to this one or if that's true for all of these scanners. And so this may not be a fair individual critique, but the fact that I can't save all that configuration for this vehicle, it knows the VIN. Why can't it save it? So I, I may be missing something. And if you guys know of something down there, you know, that I'm doing wrong, throw in a comment down below or King Bullen, if you're watching this, let me know, shoot me a message and let me know what I'm doing wrong. Cause that would be really handy. It is kind of a pain. It just, it's not, it's not that big a deal. It just takes like a few extra minutes and like five extra clicks. You know, I don't know. I may be, I may be whiny about that one, but I just wish it was better. I don't have a lot of different vehicles to test it with, so I can't give you like a why, like is this a better range of vehicles than, than the other one? Honestly, negative wise, that's about it. The uh, positives, the UI is really nice. It's big, it's easy to click stuff. The buttons are easy to hit on the screen. Um, so you've got, you know, big giant meat hook sausage fingers like I've got, then it's, you know, it's easier to push the buttons. Um, I love the swipe capability. Again, that may be just a modern Android feature. Maybe all the, all the tablets have that, but really like the case, really like the form factor of everything, the form factor of the, of the tablet itself, the form factor of the case. Um, 
the, the the layout, even the even the layout inside the case where everything stores, it all stores nicely in the pockets in which they're designed to fit. It sounds ridiculous just to make that a positive, but doggone it, X tool, like why do you have a space for a cord where the cord doesn't even fit? This is like basic design stuff, guys. So do, am I am I giving them a little too much credit for designing a halfway decent case? Probably. But hey, it's the only one I've got that's got a halfway decent case. So I'm going to give them props for that. Speed wise, it was every bit as fast as the X tool. The camera's really nice and the screen recording my sub probably has a bigger disk space on it, bigger memory. So the screen recording, I recorded the one yesterday. It was like 20 minutes long and it's still on the device and I'm not run out of space. Um, that wouldn't, I'd have to, I'd have to pull those off that one because it would run out of disk space. So, uh, from a standpoint of doing videos like this, not that that's necessarily a, a measuring stick for these scanners, but, uh, it is really nice. Um, price point, it is more expensive. Maybe that's a little bit of a con. It has a coupon right now for 110 bucks off, which gets it back into a price range. Very, very comparable to the X tool D7 D8 range. The, uh, it's us, it's a sub $500 scanner. So it's still what I would call a budget bi-directional scanner, but it is maybe the more expensive of those budget ones. And again, you do get some fancy widget features with that, like wireless capability. And, um, this is going to cost a little extra, but with that coupon, it gets it right back in range. So as long as that coupon persists, or maybe if they give or give me a coupon code to use and you maybe get a 20% or something discount, um, you know, that would be helpful as well. It gets close to that price range and that evens out. But that is a, you know, I guess in, in, the, in the comparison test, it is one where it's a, just, it is a little more expensive. But personally, I think it's worth it. Like I said earlier, I, some people think apparently I'm a scanning expert. I'm not. I've not used like a ton of these different scanners. When it comes to bi-directional scanners, I have now used exactly two. The X-Tool one is the only one I'd ever used before. So I'm not the resident expert. But this is the best one I've used so far. And I thought about, because I already had that one and I liked it and they asked me to do a review on this one, I thought, sure, and then I'll do a giveaway and give one of you guys a scanner. But I kind of fall in love with it and I think I'm gonna keep it, sorry. It's pretty nice. So if you're in the market for a budget scanner, maybe consider this an option. I do like X-Tool, they've been very good to me. Uh, they do make nice tools and so I'm not knocking them necessarily. Um, I don't think they make bad scanners. I, I love my D7. It's a very good scanner. It's been, it's served me very well for the last two years. Uh, King Bolin's given a run for their money. And if you're in the market for one, I'd certainly consider one. And um, I don't think you'd be unhappy with it. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful. I uh, hope you learned as always a little bit more about these scanners and maybe help make a, make a decision you might want to make. Appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.